In Creo Parametric, you can add water lines to your mold design. Let's take a look at how to do that. Here I have a mold manufacturing model that I made in a previous video. You can see the components for the core and the cavity and the molding. Let's get out of the mold opening analysis and everything will become unexploded. I'm going to change to a hidden line view just so that you can see inside of the model. Before I create my water lines, I'm going to create a datum plane as a necessary reference for where the water lines are to be located. I will start off by creating a new datum plane. Let's select a surface and I can drag it approximately where I want it to be. Let me try one of my saved views. Let's see, let's move it down. A ah, distance of eight looks good. And by the way, I'm not a professional mold designer. If you're like, oh, that's completely the wrong place for where the water lines should be. Hey, you might be correct. Now that I have my datum plane created, let me just call it my water line plane. Let's create our water line. I will click on the icon in the ribbon and this will open up a menu manager. So this is a command that has not actually been updated in a couple decades. It's still using the interface from Pro Engineer 2001 and earlier. The first thing that I want to know is what diameter do I want for my circuit? And it provides a suggestion. You can change it to a different value if you want. Now, since we are using this model dialog box, it's going to use a lot of menu manager for executing commands. When you're using these older interfaces, you, you want to pay a lot of attention to the message area in terms of what you are supposed to do next. With these old model dialog boxes, they usually follow a fairly rigid process for how to use them. And it is prompting me to select or create a sketching plane. Let me turn on my datum plane display. I can select that waterline plane. I have the graphics area. Next, it is giving me some more choices. Top, bottom, right, left, or default. This is for setting up an orientation reference plane. This was something that was pretty much required back in Pro Engineer 2001 and earlier, but Pro-E and Creo got away from that with this old command that was still asking for that. So I'm going to choose to face the top of the screen. Let me query select to this small surface here to use as a reference. Now it puts me into sketch mode and it opens up the sketch references dialog box. Let me turn off my datum plane display. I'm just going to pick the surfaces of the model as dimensioning references. I'm not sure which ones I'm going to use yet, but I'm just going to grab a whole bunch of them. We can hit the solve button and then close out of the sketch references dialog box. Let me change to a sketch view so I can see how I am going to sketch this. When you are making your waterline circuits, you really can only use straight lines. That's why you see that most of the other tools in the menu or excuse me, in the ribbon are grayed out. Let's sketch some lines. And again, I'm not an expert. I'm just going to sketch a bunch of different lines over here. If I'm sketching them wrong, hey, you know, write something in the comments about how I would actually design them. So I'm just going to create three lines. And the idea is that, you know, I'll come in one side or the other side and float through the model. Let's change some of these different dimensions. Let's make this a value of 20. Let's use a value of 80 for this dimension. And for this one, let's change this. Now ah, 480 looks good to me. And now we have the straight lines. Let me rotate the model. These water lines are going to be holes that are drilled in the model. And obviously I can't drill this interior segment. I will take care of that in a moment after I get out of sketch mode with the end conditions. Let's hold down the right mouse button and click the green check mark to get out of sketch mode. There are a couple of other different options in the model dialog box. If I go to the intersected parts, you could use automatic update. I prefer to pick the components manually that should be intersected. 
But again, you can use some of the different options like automatic update or auto add to figure out which ones should get the feature added to them. Let's click the OK button out of that dialog box. And then here's where we have the end conditions. I can double click on this. Now it's prompt me to select ends that I want to apply a condition to. And generally it's recommended rather than picking right, you know, sort of like trying to pick on the actual end itself, you want to pick on a segment near the intersection. That'll help determine the geometry that's created. That's why I'm going to pick over here. Let's hold down the control key and pick over there as well. And for the end conditions for that segment, let me click the OK button. And then now we have some different choices. You can do blind, through, or through with a counterbore. And so I would probably need to use at least a through here because this cannot be drilled in the middle of the part. Let's do through with a counterbore. And then I can click done return out of here. Now for the counterbore diameter, it is suggesting by default twice the diameter of the circuit itself. I will accept that value. And for the depth, it's also using twice the diameter of the circuit. I will hit the enter key to accept that. And now it's asking me again because you're doing each of the segments in the order in which you selected them. Let me hit the enter key a couple more times. And now you can see how the circuit has been extended. You can also see what the counter board looks like on one of the ends. Let me also do the same. Here I have you know, what I'm going to use as the entry and exit for the water. Let's select those ends as well. I'll hold down the control key and grab the other one. And then I can hit OK out of there. And once again, I want to have some counter bores in there. So I'm just going to pick through with counter bore and then done return. And once again, I'm just going to accept the default values that Creo Parametric is suggesting. Those are the only end conditions that I can or will define. Let's hit done return. There is a preview button in here, but it's already previewing the geometry to me. Let's click the OK button out of there. Let's change to a shading with edges mode. Once again, we can't see where the water lines are. Let's create a cross section. I'll go to the View tab, and then from the Section dropdown, I will choose the Planar option. And I will pick that datum plane that I previously created. Let's change to using the default light blue color so we can get some contrast with the actual part interior component geometry. Let me also show a hatch pattern. This hatch pattern is really big. Unfortunately, you can't edit the hatch pattern inside of the dashboard for the section. You can do that afterwards. I want to change the name of my section. Now I can hit the check mark. Let's change to, let's say a top view should get me. Yep, and that way we can see where our parts are located. Let me adjust the cross hatching again. You can click on the cross section and then under edit actions, this button allows you to adjust the hatching. And for the hatching, let me select and let's try to get lines closer together. That's good. Click the OK button. And so there you can see my water lines that I have running through this particular model. Let's go back to the mold tab and mold opening. I guess because that component had a cross section, it is not being displayed in here. But again, that's how you can use the waterline functionality in order to create some production features right in mold design mode. You can also create water lines and other production features in mold layout and the expert mold base extension. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.